Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. First of all, I want to show you a new discovery I had at Staples, the uh, office supply store. I was looking for alternate sources of cheap paper that I could use. And I found this, it's called easel and floor pad. And this is for, obviously, for children uh, or children's art classes. It's a pad. It has 50 sheets per pad, and each package has two pads. So that makes it 100 sheets. And they are 17 inch by 20 inch. And... Lo and behold, the paper fits exactly over the gel plate. So, after my fiasco the other day wrestling with this sheet of plastic, I, I think you guys got a good laugh out of that. I think this makes more sense because it's a little more stable. I can draw on it and I can cut out stencils with it and I can do my layouts and cheat sheets on it. So I thought I'd share that with you because I believe in not spending too much money on art supplies. Art supplies can quickly drain your bank account as you well know. So you have to choose wisely. So anyway, I uh, thought I'd share that with you. So let's get on to do some art. I'm going to repeat my theme of curved lines. So I'm going to start drawing. Curved lines. And so what I plan to do is cut out these shapes. And create a composition. So I will place this on my cutting board and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my new paper cheat sheet on my cutting board. So I'm going to assign certain areas. No, they don't have to be exactly the shape, but like with all other cheat sheets, this is just a guide.
I'm also leaving a little bit of space, about a quarter of an inch, between the open areas, just to prevent it from falling apart. It's when you have two open areas touching each other. That's the weak part. And I want to make sure that the stencil holds up without falling apart on the plate. Okay, I think that does it. So this is a little easier to handle than that piece of plastic that was falling apart. So the next step is to figure out how the sequence goes with the inking of the uh, acrylic paint and the stencil. Okay, I'm done with cutting the stencil. So now I am going to add some lines. no particular direction just adding some background movement Okay, now hopefully the next layer of paint will pick this up. Okay, back from a short break off camera, I had uh, put some more lines and mixed up this kind of like a light brown uh, earthy color so hopefully this will pick up the black lines so i'm going to have two zones here with a light brown here and as usual, my favorite raw sienna. So I will try to keep this band of raw sienna in the middle.
bit of a challenge when your table is very small but I'm forced to improvise Okay, so this gets left on the plate for about 15 minutes. So I will be back. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes. Let's see what we have here. I think it's a quite an impressive transfer. I'd say about 95% of the paint has transferred. Pretty cool. Now there are a few, um, I think the proper term is holidays. There are a few holidays here and there, but that's the nature of a printed image. So I get to air dry this and I will be right back. Okay, here we are at the next phase of this project. And the print has dried very nicely. And I have here my black tissue paper, which I'm going to mount. And the tissue paper will act as a second layer.
Okay, that does it for the second layer. And I will let this dry before I move on to the next step. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the collage to dry, I'm going to ink this. So there are two zones of color here. These are unlikely unlikely partners, I should say. This is a light blue arctic. It's almost gone. A light blue arctic and cadmium red. So we'll start with the Arctic.
That was nasty. That's another limitation of a paper stencil. Now, I doubt if this is reusable because once the paper gets saturated with moisture, it literally just falls apart. So, All right now, there's some blots here. But I'm, I'm not going to worry about it. So here is the print with the black tissue collage. Again, I will leave this for about 10 minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see what we got here. I hope the uh, collage isn't going to come off. It looks very painterly, I think. There's some two little dots there that are stray. That's okay. Something different. And I'm pleased that the edges are very sharp and clean. So this gets air dried again and I will contemplate a third layer. So back in a few minutes. Okay, everybody, I hope that this is the last leg and last layer of this project. I have here some pewter by Amsterdam, and then I added about, oh, I'd say two tablespoons of water just to thin it out because I want it to be a bit transparent. So, I hope this will do the trick. It may or may not work, but like all other projects, this is an experiment. It's not an exact science. So, 
I'll have to try it out. And these little pieces of plastic were the pieces that were cut out of the cheat sheet in the previous video. I tend to use what's on hand. So it's very spontaneous. It's the same principle when I do collage, I improvise and use what I have. Okay. So I'm hoping that this will create a thin layer in a thin transparent layer. Just making sure my hands are clean and that there's nothing in the way. So here is the print once more. I'm hoping that the pewter, since it's a metallic color, will give a little bit of shine to the surface. Okay, so back in 10 minutes. And hopefully this will complete the picture. I think that does the trick. a little bit of stray pieces of foil but I, I think this solves the problem it ties all the disparate elements together and it's a unified image so I'm going to allow this to dry completely and then recap Okay, it's time to recap. This has dried nicely. And to be honest, I spent almost half an hour trying to play around with collage and see if I can add something else. But I think this is a standalone and it's time to call it done. So anyway, here is a close-up
there's the layer of pewter that gives it this iridescent shine. And I think the open areas interact very nicely with the background lines and the uh, assorted shapes created by the circular strokes. So I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked this uh, experiment. And once again, I want to thank all you wonderful subscribers. And if you can, please donate to my PayPal account to help defray the cost of production and art supplies. I hope to see you next time.